Well, for weeks, President Trump has been ridiculed for his claim that the Obama administration may have monitored his communications, and he still hasn't provided proof of that. But today, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez revealed that there is evidence, some, supporting the president's claim. Watch this. What I've read uh, seems to me to be some level of surveillance activity, perhaps legal, uh, but I don't know that it's right, and I don't know that the American people would be comfortable uh, with, with what I've read, but let's, let us get all the reports. Chairman, and, Chairman, and, Chairman, and, Chairman, 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 it is, it is possible. Well, President Trump reacted this way. Do you feel vindicated by Chairman Nunez coming over here? I, I somewhat do. I must tell you, I somewhat do. I very much appreciated the fact that uh, uh, they found what they found, but I somewhat do. So this is a genuinely interesting development. We call more than 30 members of Congress from both parties who have mocked the president's claim he was surveilled. None of them agreed to come on. So instead, we're joined by someone brave, Jessica Tarloff. She's a Democratic strategist and senior director at Bustle.com. Jessica, good to see you. Nice to see you, too. That's like the best intro ever. <laughs> So, I mean, look, I was frustrated by the president's tweet. I said it right to him in an yeah, interview I know, last I week. I thought it was imprecise. I still think that. But I think underlying all of this is a really big issue that we're ignoring, we being the press, because the press hates Trump. And that is that the U.S. government may have, in effect, misused the power of its intelligence agencies for political purposes. We're not sure of that. But it's a little bit weird that one administration would be surveilling a candidate and or his staff during a presidential race on the other side. Doesn't that sort of give you pause? Well, that's not what I understood happened today, actually, or what Congressman Nunez was saying. What I understood he was saying is that there may have been legal surveillance of foreign actors that then picked up, incidentally picked up activity within Trump Tower. So I think the real issue is here, why were we surveilling people that people within Trump Tower were speaking to? And the fact that the president's claim is still, as far as we know, completely inaccurate and without foundation. That's what right. I took away from today. So those, those, are, those are two separate, those are two separate um, things. But let's go to the first one first. Now, I, I think I think there's evidence that these investigations were initiated by the Obama administration because they believed there were untoward ties between the Trump administration and foreign actors. A. B. We know from the chairman's remarks today that those names in the documents, in the readouts of the conversations that were wiretapped, in effect, were not redacted which contravenes policy. You're not supposed to leave the names open and have them floating around government systems. Absolutely. And yet they did leave the names unmasked, as they say, which seems a major violation. It does. And I've had this conversation before, and I do think it's important to address that issue that those names are protected when they are supposed to be. But at the same time, I don't know why, Repu well, actually, I do know why Republicans want to focus on that and not the fact that Donald Trump made this claim without anything to back it up. And we even have a breaking news report this evening that it looks like the FBI does have evidence that there was collusion between Trump campaign members and Russian operatives in order to damage Hillary Clinton. And we'll see where that continues to go. But well, it's very that, odd. I, I, don't, I don't know that we have that. I, I, think, I think what we have saw, is, that is one of the Democrats on the committee suggesting that there's evidence. And, yeah. and look, I'm open-minded about that. But here's, here's the point. The idea that one administration might be using the massive intelligence gathering of the United States government for political purposes is it's a terrifying prospect. And we've it seen it before. We saw it with Governor Elliot Spitzer of New York. And I'm sorry to defend Elliot Spitzer because I know everyone doesn't like him and he's a liberal and I'm not. <laughs> but he was put under surveillance by the feds for the crime of adding money to his own bank account. And because he got caught up in the hooker scandal, nobody seemed to care. But it was a big deal. We saw General David Petraeus, whose life was destroyed because they broke into his Gmail account. Because why? So this stuff, this power has been misused again and again. But it's been misused against people who are not popular in the press. So nobody says anything about it. But we should care. We, why don't we, we care? absolutely should care. Should care. And I just would like this to be separate conversations. I mean, I'm happy for us to talk about all of them, but one doesn't, you know, equate to the other necessarily, and we can treat them well, as separate entities. there's precedent for the misuse of this information. That's, that's the only point I'm making. We've seen this before. It does happen, and you're not some sort of kooky flat earther for believing the government can hurt its own citizens with these spying powers, because no, it has. I, no, I understand that, and again, I'm happy to have that conversation, but it doesn't make it all right that Donald Trump made this accusation that the former president of the United States of America was wiretapping him when we've seen no evidence of it. That's well, the issue we here. Some, also, wait, wait, hold on. Why? Didn't we see some today? We just saw. Why? We, because we saw you the saw chairman it? of the House Intelligence Committee say. What did yes. he show you? He said that maybe well, he had maybe, something maybe, that maybe, he maybe. thinks was legal. And also, why did well, he not go legal. to his committee members first? Why did he go to the White House first and then to the that, press? That, that's that's a fair. That's an entirely fair question. But it ignores the root of it all, which is 
it did happen apparently. Whether or not it's legal is foregone. Everything is legal. The government can do whatever it wants. Its spying powers are unlimited, and by the way, it can be unilaterally ordered by the President of the United States. That's legal too. I'm not saying it happened here. I'm just saying it's all legal. The question is, should you be doing it? And he basically confirmed that intel agencies controlled by the Obama administration were spying, maybe unintentionally, maybe not, on Trump staffers, like recently. That's what Trump said, in effect. Well, no, and not still. in effect. We've gone through so many iterations of what Donald Trump said. He's put things now in quotation marks. We've heard about microwave spying. We have to go back to the original tweet, which is not at all what happened. And we've heard from Director Comey, we've heard from the head of the NSA, we've heard from Nunez himself, Adam Schiff, Richard Burr. Everyone has said that the original claim that he made is unfounded. Now, if Wait, but doesn't what Nunez says, said today, I mean, how does that not back it up? He said, look, there were people, maybe it wasn't Trump himself. But he that's suggested what Donald it, Trump but, said. No, I, look, again, I have criticized the president to his face for being imprecise. I like But it. there is something important here for the third time, which is the spying powers of the U.S. government seem like they may have been misused by the Obama people. Liberals should be really worried about that, because if it can be done to Trump and people you don't like, it can be done to people you do like. And Absolutely. You. Well, we know about spying. We know what happened during the campaign, and we know what WikiLeaks has done, and it exposed tons of DNC emails, and we know all about, you know, John Podesta's cooking and, and all of that stuff. So, but the U.S. government doing it to its own it's citizens for political terrible. reasons, there's nothing scary. That's third world, no? It is. Absolutely frightening. It's things that go on in places like Russia, things that go on in places right. like China, and exactly. that's disturbing. I'm just saying that there are many conversations going on here, and I feel like Republicans only want to have that conversation when there's an important other one to be had about the claims that the President of the United States of America has made about the former President of the United States of America seemingly unfounded. And he's out there tonight retweeting Gateway Pundit and Bill Mitchell, who says, oh, Donald Trump is always okay, right. You, 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 know, don't need, you don't need to retweet websites. You could just repeat what the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee said. Maybe he's lying. Maybe. But if he's Why not didn't he show lying, his own committee the information then? I, I mean, it's a little he freaky. Will, but if, if this is true, this is a bigger scandal than anything that's being alleged about Russia, is it not? I think that those are two enormous scandals if they both play out. If we find okay. out that the Trump administration or the future Trump administration colluded with Russia to influence the election, that is massive. If we find out that the Obama administration was wiretapping uh, Donald Trump through his phone or his microwave, that is also massive. We're a lot but closer to one than the other, but I'll invite you back when we find out Thank for you. sure. Jesse Tarloff, <laughs> thanks for coming on.